Praise God. Praise God. Let the people of God say Amen. Amen. I welcome you to the Bread Broadcast, a Bible teaching program from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, a unit of Eternal Food Ministry, where we edify, we exalt, and we challenge believers to the Great Commission. Here we also call sinners to salvation through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us. Today we are going to be talking about from guilt to glory. From guilt to glory. Our short lesson, our short reading, will be from the gospel according to St. John chapter 4, Verse 1, we stop at 30. I know that's a kind of a long read, but you are going to enjoy it because it's, it combines historical uh, aspect of that chapter and the ministration of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verse 1, we start at 30. On our case study is the Samaritan woman. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you, Lord, that you are God. Oh, Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, we ask, oh Lord, that you will speak your word through this lesson to every ear and every heart in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father, Grant people the opening of spiritual eyes through this lesson. And let the name of our Lord Jesus Christ alone be glorified. For in the name of our Lord Jesus have we asked and prayed. Amen and Amen. Our foundation text is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 14. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man, now that's talking about mankind, we sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear. That is, if somebody is sick, but they still have hope, the spirit is not broken. They can still be sustained on their sick bed. But when somebody has lost hope, or oh, the spirit is broken, that's unbearable. How did the Samaritan woman move from guilt to glory? She started from, number one, guilt. This Samaritan woman is a lone ranger. Please listen, it's a very fascinating story. Because she doesn't fit into the customary acceptability of her time. This also explains why she comes out to draw water at noon instead of morning or evening time. In that ancient uh, time, in that culture, women would go to the uh, to go draw water uh, in groups, not alone, and they would go either in the morning or in the evening. But this lady, she is by herself and she comes out in the noon when the sun is very high. This may explain why she asks the Lord Jesus for his fountain of water so she won't thirst or have to come out to get water again. She's carrying an invisible heavy burden of guilt which only the Lord Jesus can see. Listen, please. When many people have become sick of the life they are leading, they often do not know what to do with the heavy load it hands over to them. This sends many to the valley of loneliness and stormy quietness. A lady was asking, an expert during the week I was watching it and she said what do I tell my relatives uh, who think I'm crazy 
about something and she explained herself and that expert said honestly um i don't know what i can tell you i don't have the answer uh all i can say is just keep on keeping on and i was screaming like oh no that's not the answer you see they don't have the answer you see for a stormy um a quietness they don't psychologists can try to numb the guilt counselors can try to absolve you of the responsibility of the guilt they will say it's not your fault it's the way your mama looked at you when you were a baby you see and doctors can try to medicate the burden with painkillers I was talking to a friend and a sister, really. She's a clinical psychologist. And we were talking one day. And she looked at me and said, Sister Josephine, America is a medicated population. Said Americans, they're over-medicated. Because people just get all these painkillers trying to get remedy for something that is spiritual. Educators may try to teach how to ignore that gnawing burden of guilt in the heart. Nevertheless, all of these professional helps only amount to temporary relief. Only God can correctly diagnose and disconnect a life from such burdens. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can do that. Let's go to Psalm 51. Verses 3 and 4. Psalm 51, 3 to 4. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, that is against God, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. This was the psalm of David uh, when he was repenting concerning the sin of adultery with Bathsheba. Now you may say, oh, I've, I've not done anything wrong. Really? Who rules your life? Who is the king on the throne of your life? Huh? If it's not the Lord Jesus, then you are sinned against God. Because you are telling God that you are your own God. And that is the worst sin. So if you don't have the peace of mind, if you, if you are carrying burden of guilt around, that is the source of your problem. You are sinned against God. But if you come to God and say, God, I'm sorry, I made a God out of myself. Because I don't even recognize you. If you can do that, watch what happens to that burden and write me a letter. Okay? Sin subtracts the sunlight from the soul and supplies soreness to it. Josephine Zion, say that again. Somebody needs to hear that. Sin subtracts the sunlight from the soul and supplies soreness to it. Moving on. She moved, she started from guilt and moved to grief. The Samaritan woman is carrying grief on the, underneath a well-packaged, busy schedule. How about you, huh? From work to your social gathering to, uh, to the gym, just trying to pack as much as you can pack into your 24 hours because you don't want to address the white elephant in the room the lord knowing a real problem went past a racial and cynical responses and asks her to go and call her husband if she wants the fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. When the Lord Jesus started talking to her, um, at, her first response was, 
a racial bias. Maybe that's your problem right now. And you're saying she doesn't even talk like I talk. She doesn't look like I look. Listen, that's not your problem. Let's go to the real problem. What's eating you up? Huh? What's eating you up? You need to come clean. So God can save you. So the Lord Jesus went right past that racial and cynical responses and said, go call your husband. Because that's the main problem that this lady has. The Samaritan woman has serious marital problems. She has been divorced five times. And now she's living with a man other than her husband. Even in today's corrupt culture, when a woman has been married and divorced five times, she gets a second look. And women, married women, they will be very quick to tell one another, get your husband away from her. You see. Now you can imagine somebody in that time. She's a cultural and societal outcast and the favorite topic of many gossips in a village. Whatever led to these previous divorces, she cannot absorb herself of the fact that she's a Syria divorcee. Now, many things lead to people getting a divorce, but the fact is you cannot deny if you have been divorced, you cannot deny that you have been divorced, you see. With the feeling of guilt comes not only the burden, but the grief to bear with it. It's a sinking, self-loathing feeling that only the individual can adequately explain. Many who find themselves in this valley try to drown out their grief with cocktail of physical remedies. Some people will take to shopping. And I've seen many of those types of ladies. I mean, they will just keep shopping. And you, they will be telling you, I don't even need it. But I like it anyway. It's not what they like. It's what is uh, piling away from their joy and moving away from their life, you see. Some will take to drinking, socializing, overwork. They work themselves until they are almost collapsing on the job, you see. And so many other things that a lot of people take to to mask that grief. However, this cannot resolve the problem unless the root cause is exposed and expunged. Let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 13. Proverbs 14, 13. Even in laughter, the heart may sorrow, and the end of mirth may be grief. Grief is the byproduct of the wrong product, which reconstructs the heart's function with its corruption. What is the wrong product in your life? Huh? What is the wrong product that you have taken from the deceptive system of this world and the lies of the devil? Grief is the byproduct of the wrong product, which reconstructs the heart's function with its corruption. Moving on. This lady, carrying guilt, burden of guilt, and self-loathing feeling of grief, she tells the Lord Jesus Christ, what's wrong with her? And the Lord Jesus responds with grace. 
That brings us to our third point. The Samaritan woman confesses that she has no husband. The Lord replies with grace. The Lord tells her she has broken, spoken the truth because of her marital history. God has promised, please listen, that anyone who humbles themselves to agree with the divine verdict that they are a sinner who needs God's mercy and forgiveness will be forgiven and pardoned by God. I like to tell people when they come to me for counseling, listen, God is not asking you to confess. Don't confess to me. I'm nobody. Confess to God. When you confess to God, it's to save you. It's not to shame you, you see. He has promised, if you humble yourself and say, God, I'm a sinner in need of salvation, it will not shame you. Oh, no. It will save you. There is no one who confesses to the Lord Jesus and is shamed for it. It has never happened. And it's never going to be. On the contrary, the Bible teaches that if we humble ourselves, we will receive God's grace. The Bible says it gives grace to the humble. Grace means to be blessed with what we don't deserve. I don't deserve the kind of life I'm living today. No, I don't. If you think I've always had it together, that's why my life turned out this way, you are dead wrong. I deserve a top spot in the lake of fire. But the Lord Jesus had mercy on me and saved me. Saved me from myself Set me from my sin, from the power of the enemy, and he turned my life around. And he's wanting to do the same for you. In place of condemnation, we receive justification. That's what happened to so many of us who are God's children. We were supposed to be condemned to eternal damnation. But when we surrender to the Lord, we become justified in the Lord Jesus Christ. In place of hell, we receive heaven. In place of burden, we receive blessing. For everyone who asks, it shall be given unto them. For those who seek, they will find. And for those who knock, it will be opened to them. Let's go to the book of Psalm 34, verse 4. Psalm 34, 4. I sought the Lord. This is from somebody like me, who was once a low and sinner, and cried out to God, and God had mercy on him, as he had mercy on me. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears, my fears of my past, my fears of what's going to happen, he delivered me from all that. Millions of my brothers and sisters all over the world in Christ Jesus, they can testify of the same thing too, that he delivered us from our fears once we cried out to him. I looked to his face, hallelujah, and found his grace, and he erased all my heart aches. Let me say that again, so beautiful. I looked to his face and found his grace and he erased all my heart aches. And this lady came to glory because she became God's instrument of glory. This nameless Samaritan woman who was a five times divorcee, friendless and worthless in the sight of many in a village takes the top spot of the first woman. Are you ready for this? To preach the gospel publicly in the Bible. It has never happened until this woman. Through a witness of Christ that she has seen the Messiah, 
who told her everything she has ever done. Many people believed. So you can say Josephine Zion is actually working in the uh, footsteps or in the path of that woman as a public Bible teacher. This woman started it in the Bible, you see. A nonentity became a celebrity. Hallelujah. Because she accepted the gospel of grace and the glory of Christ Jesus came into her life through the message she received and transformed her. Are you going to receive the message? Huh? Are you? There are countless stories of many believers whose lives were once in the ruins of life before meeting with the Lord Jesus. And they go on to make great strides in many areas of life. This is what can happen to any soul who is willing to be lifted up from life's pit of grief to God's palace of glory. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. Romans 4, 7 through 8. Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. When God says, not guilty. Nobody. Not the devil. Not all the demons in hell. Not the old world can score you guilty. No. When God says, he is not guilty, she is not guilty, then you are not. Hallelujah. And um, whose sins are covered, that is, are removed. Blessed is the man or the woman to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. He can, he has the power, but he said, I choose not to because she has accepted my son. So the Lord shall not impute. He refuses to call that individual a sinner because that individual has accepted the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. His glory turns every heartache to a hallelujah. Hallelujah. And every burden into a blessing. His glory turns every heartache to a hallelujah. And every burden into a blessing. So what have we done so far? How did the Samaritan woman move from guilt to glory? She started from guilt. She's carrying a big invisible load in her heart. Then she had grief. She's sorrowful in her present because of her past. But when she met with the Lord Jesus Christ, she finds grace. She was not shamed for confessing her past before the Lord Jesus. And as a result, she became God's instrument of glory. Her life changes from shame to fame through a preaching of the gospel. Are you a believer and you are burdened and sinking in sorrow? Huh? That's not what you've been saved unto. No. We have been saved unto the joy of the Lord. If you go back and trace your spiritual walk back to where that sinking feeling started, you will know what happened. In humility, confess your sin to God. You will find the Lord waiting for you where you started feeling that sinking feeling. You'll find the Lord waiting for you there. All right? Are you an unbeliever? Your burden of guilt is because of your sin of rebellion against God. And I've explained that a little bit in detail. This means you are lost. You are lost. You are lost because you made a definite decision to reject Jesus Christ up until now. God holds you responsible for that. Oh yeah. 
However, this is the good news. Things can change right here, right now. Because the Lord Jesus died for you because of that. All your sins, he paid for it already. All he's asking is that you ask for that pardon. If you can humble yourself and are willing to be saved, the Lord Jesus is willing to save you right here, right now. A link will be coming up. Follow that link. All right? We have uh, a specially prepared uh, set of instructions on how you can come to the Lord Jesus and surrender everything. Stop being the God of your own life. You don't even know how to, how to live your life. You are too small for that. So come back to the one who made you and see what he makes out of your life. All right? Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for paying the price, the penalty of our sin debt, that we might be debt free. Oh, thank you for delivering us from all the guilt of our past, from the fear of the future. Thank you for your joy in our present life. We are very grateful, Lord. And for those who are going to want to know Jesus' page, to get this indescribable gift that you gave us through your death, burial, and resurrection, Father, grant them the understanding to know what it means to be your child. And Father, as they cry out to you, receive them, O oh Lord. For in Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only if the Lord Jesus has not split the sky open. Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 